Let's learn how to deal with broken wires. Here's an example of a broken wire. We see the dashed line and then the red X. If we wave our cursor over that, it gives us detailed information about why it's a broken wire. In this case, it's because we're trying to join an array to a scalar indicator. We can also use the context help to uh, give us some more information there as well. So what I'll do is delete my wire. I'm going to delete my indicator temporarily. And then if I create an indicator from this terminal, then it automatically generates an indicator of the appropriate type. Again, in this case, that correct type is an array. If I turned off indexing, then we're back to a scalar output from the for loop. And so we have an inconsistent uh, match between the terminal and the indicator terminal. So again, similarly, we can delete it and start over with the appropriate type of terminal. This is probably not something you do um, intentionally, but you might accidentally end up with multiple sources going to a single output terminal. Now this generates a number of broken wires, but actually it's only this one that's causing us the problem. So I can delete that segment. And then probably the easiest thing to do is simply delete the remaining segments. But let's find out why the or, I'm sorry, we, we see that the uh, run arrow is still broken at this point. Let's try that one more time. If I do a uh, delete on the entire wire, well, uh, we lose a lot of other wires as well. So again, just a little bit of uh, effort to troubleshoot why that broken arrows there is helpful. So actually the broken run arrow is due to the fact that our for loop does not yet have a number of times that it's supposed to run. So I'll take care of that here. Now let's try generating some more broken wires. Notice that uh, in this case, uh, the, the constant doesn't seem to have a problem with the dangling output terminal. And it, now we see that the run arrow is uh, not broken any longer. So it's okay to have things like controls and um, constants have their, their terminals not go any place. That's actually acceptable. Place where we can run into troubles though is if we have something like an unconnected output terminal and that will, will need to be resolved first. Let's explore another possibility. Supposing you were to loop the output back around to the input of a node. This is called a cycle and is uh, an invalid connection. Now, interestingly enough, though, if we do this inside the for loop, actually, I'm going to need to free up a terminal here on the um, addition node. If I intentionally wire a feedback path like this, then LabVIEW automatically inserts what's called the feedback node. And that's that arrow structure that we see there. Normally, I, li I like to see the feedback node pointing backwards instead of forwards. And uh, the auto placement of that can sometimes be a little tricky. Let me try to give a little more space here and try again. Oh, it's still not going to work. Well. Um, That'd be something for you to explore on your own a little bit. It, uh, you can try to influence how that feedback node shows up a little bit. All right, that's broken wires.